In this study, we were really motivated by the lack of information for different types of communities and populations when it comes to the efficacy and safety of drug effects. And the lack of information is a result of many years and decades of clinical trials being done on relatively homogenous populations. Traditionally, clinical trials were done on young, healthy males. And, and that has produced a bias in terms of the types of data that we have available to us to evaluate drug safety. We don't know as much about how drugs work effectively or when they cause adverse effects in women versus men. And this is true for other subpopulations as well and other minority populations. But in this study, we focused on addressing that issue specifically for women and looking at if we can identify sex differences in drug response. So the FDA data set contains many different biases like differential reporting, age, these are all confounding factors of sex. So what our machine learning model does is it takes information for a given patient of all these different factors. So what drugs are they prescribed to? How many drugs are they prescribed to? How old is the patient, etc. cetera. Um, and we take these features and we predict based on these features, how likely is this patient to be female? One of the most striking examples of these sex differences in drug response is the drug Ambien. So Ambien uh, has been approved for a really long time. It helps people sleep because of the differences in metabolism between men and women. Women require half the dose that men do. And this was not known until it became a preponderance of evidence started coming out. So rather than take kind of a stance that we just wait for the evidence to become so overwhelming that we have to do something about it, we wanted to be a little bit more proactive, use these databases like the adverse event reporting system from the FDA or the electronic health records to get a jump on identifying sex-specific adverse events before it's too late. One of the important discoveries of our study is that sex differences are more nuanced than simply reducing the dosage of a drug for either sex. Um, a single gene's differential expression can actually have very diverse effects in both men and women for different drugs. So for example, this gene ABCB1, we, we showed that um, pharmacogenetically, it causes a prolonged QTC from risperidone in women, um, whereas it puts men at a risk of myalgia from simvastatin. And these are just completely unrelated side effects, unrelated drugs um, that are tied to a single gene. So the key point is that there needs to be a very comprehensive understanding that's more nuanced than just um, reducing the dosage of a drug. We validated our findings against known differences in expression levels for important pharmacogenes, genes that actually metabolize, are known to metabolize drugs. So differences in the activities of these genes will result in differences in levels in the bloodstream of these drugs, and that can result in differences in adverse events. What we did is we used a database or a previous study that had uh, enumerated these differences between men and women, these important drug metabolism genes, and we showed that the predictions, that we could make predictions by combining that data set and our data set that were validated by external databases like uh, pharmacogenetic databases.